Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. If any pastor knows what they're doing, they know how to take a cue from their organist. It is such a joy to have Cindy playing for us this morning. Would you say with me, Lord in our joy? We have a number of announcements that we would draw to your attention this morning. Uh, as I have said a, a number of times over the last few weeks, we are really have been moving back into full ministry uh, here at Epworth. But that comes with some caveats, and so we will be uh, meeting again with our, our COVID task force and to talk about uh, some concerns as the Delta variant is really uh, present more and more in North Dakota and in Barnes County. But with all of those caveats in place, we are moving back uh, into some of our full ministry. Uh, and so we have some activities coming up this week, uh, including uh, uh, we have scheduled our church family supper on Wednesday night. We haven't had that in in quite a while and so we're looking forward to that chance to come and just eat together so that's on Wednesday night with no other uh, no other uh, requirement other than come and have supper together as a church family uh, following our church family supper we have uh, begun our season of choir rehearsal and of youth ministry and so both of those events happen on Wednesday as well uh, also on Saturday the 11th we are having our men's breakfast for the first time in a long time. And so we invite you to come and have a, have a simple breakfast with us and have uh, some good conversation and a brief devotion. And so we invite you to join us for that on Saturday morning. Uh, and I don't have a time right in front of me, but I know the time is in the bulletin. And finally, next Sunday, we begin our Sunday school ministry again. Uh, we are still, I think uh, Haley is still recruiting a, a leader or two, and yet we are looking forward to all of those activities going on in the church, uh, including both of our adult classes beginning, both our Faith Link and our adult Bible study beginning next Sunday. And so we look forward to these events uh, in the life of our congregation. This morning we are completing our sermon series on our Breakthrough Prayer. Uh, this has been a fun series for me to do. I hope you have enjoyed it as well. As we have looked at some of the key phrases in this prayer, we've been praying for four and a half or five years now. Uh, and so this morning we will be looking at what it means to follow God's good news uh, as we gather together for worship. Are there any other announcements this morning that I'm neglecting? We celebrate our life together and take part in these ministries so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Thanks be to God. As you stand and greet your neighbor, I invite you to tell them who first told you about Jesus Christ. Can you remember who first told you? Was it your parents? Was it a uh, Sunday school teacher that, whose name you struggle to remember? Who first told you about Jesus Christ? I invite you to stand and greet your neighbor. Okay. Good morning. My name is Alyssa Thompson, and I am glad to serve as a reader this morning. For those of you worshiping online, a bulletin is available on our homepage if you would like to follow along as we worship together. Let us join in our call to worship. Those who trust in the Lord cannot be moved, but abide. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I invite you to remain standing as we join in our opening song, number 147, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
Please be seated as we join our voices, asking God to be present with us this day. Let us pray together. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you have shown us the truth of your commandments. Give us sincere hearts that we may serve you with joy, obey you with love, and manifest your wisdom to the world. Through Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. We take some time each Sunday to share together in the joys and concerns of our life together. What joys would you share today? Sunday school starting next week, that is a joy. We say, Lord, in our joy, hear our prayer. <laughs> uh, uh, the kayaker in the front row says we have a beautiful river more people should be on it so it is it is a joy to have the Cheyenne running through Valley City Lord in our joy hear our prayer nobody is gonna mention the rain it's been a good week people have had to mow again which is a, a bad thing but also it has been it has been good to have rain we say Lord in our joy it is a holiday weekend. We know there are people who are celebrating and spending time with family. And so for that chance to, to get out and enjoy the beautiful weather, we say, Lord, in our joy, hear our prayer. Michelle. Yes, the flowers, the flowers in the sanctuary. We'll talk about that in a minute. The beautiful flowers in the sanctuary. That, that part of it is a joy. Uh, and so for this beautiful gift of flowers that comes from the Mueller family, we say, Lord, in our joy, Hear our prayer. We have a number of concerns that we would share this morning as well. We want to continue to lift up the leaders of our city and county, state, and our nation as we are dealing with uh, issues both in local communities and around the world. We say, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift up those who are dealing with COVID-19 those who are ill and those who are providing care and those who are providing vaccines. We lift them before our God saying, Lord, in your mercy. We do want to continue to pray for those who have been affected by uh, Hurricane Ida and then as the, as the tropical uh, rain came through and just inundated parts of the country that weren't ready for it. We remember all those families that are dealing with loss. Uh, the people of New Orleans are... Uh, they're hoping to have power back by Wednesday. Um, the heat index has been be between 100 and 120 degrees. And so we pray for all of these communities. We say, Lord, in your mercy. We have a number of members who are dealing with cancer and its treatments, members of our community and others. We lift up Pat and Sue, Howie and Duane, Jan, and others who we lift up in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We want to lift up the family of Donald Layton. Uh, Don grew up in Valley City but left to go to college. Uh, and uh, and uh, just it, in some ways he never returned and in some ways he never left. Uh, he considered this home and uh, Don, who had lived uh, most, of most of his life in Colorado, uh, died at the veterans home and was laid to rest at uh, Woodbine with his family on Saturday. And so we lift up Don and his, uh, his wife, Polly, and his children as they remember Don on Saturday. Lord, in your mercy. I want to lift up the family and friends of Brent Johnson. Uh, Brent is a community member, uh, and his uh, family uh, requested that uh, we host the service on Wednesday. And so we will be remembering Brent 
uh, and we lift up his family and friends. Lord, in your mercy. We also want to lift up the family of Ron Nelson. Uh, Ron was Amy Nesky's brother. Uh, he was living on the family farmstead um, in uh, Park River, and he died unexpectedly of sepsis. He had an infection that nobody knew about, uh, and he was at, in his home and uh, passed away. And so we lift up Jim, or I'm sorry, lift up Ron and uh, Amy and all of their family. Lord, in your mercy. If you have seen uh, uh, Sam, uh, Sam's car, the judge, that was Ron's. And so that, uh, that's a connection uh, for those of you who have been in the car club. Uh, we want to lift up the family of Jim Noel. Uh, Anita's brother passed away on Friday. Um, it was, uh, he's had a number of surgeries, a number of serious infections, uh, and he did pass away. Um, is, his illness was unexpected, uh, but he has been dealing with um, some infections and hospitalization for a while. And so we lift up uh, Jim and all his family, uh, Anita and, uh, and her siblings as well. Uh, we lift them up to God. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, the, the flowers, the beautiful flowers on the altar are from the services for Marcus Mueller. Uh, Marcus was Phil and Darlene's son. Um, he also was farming the, the uh, he was farming the Mueller place, shall we say. And uh, he passed, unaway, uh, passed away unexpectedly in a farm accident this week. And so we lift up Michelle, his wife, and the, their five girls, many of whom have joined us for worship and for youth group. And so we lift up the entire Mueller family and hold them in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, are there other concerns you would share today? There is real grief in our community. I have never had five families listed before in my concerns. And so this week, and maybe every week, be gentle with those you meet. You don't know who is dealing with loss and sorrow. Let us spend some time in individual prayer. God of peace and justice, you have called us to follow you as we walk together in faith. Guide our hearts now as we pray for one another gathered with us this day, and as we pray for the one who is seated on our right. And let us pray for one who is seated on our left. We pray this day for one who is worshiping with us online. And let us pray for one who is not present with us this day. Almighty God, because you are on our side, we have been delivered from the hand of our enemies. May your holy name be honored in all the earth. In your eyes, all are equal. You have called us to love our neighbors as ourselves. You have shown your love for the poor in providing for their needs. But we are a weak and arrogant people. Rather than seeing each person as your precious child, we look upon the outward appearance and give honor to those who meet the world's standards of success. Have mercy upon us for all our sins of discrimination and own us as your chosen once more. Look upon the faith of your church 
and fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Turn the words of faith into works of mercy, that our faith may live and your commission may be fulfilled. Your word is powerfully proclaimed through the showing forth of your desire for all to be free. Speak the word of release to all those who are possessed by the demons of pain. Proclaim release to those imprisoned in the silent world of inner torment. Free the tongues of all who suffer, that they may proclaim your glory to all the world. O Lord, our help is in your name, the one who made heaven and earth. Bless us with peace and answer us, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This section of Proverbs contains several pieces of wisdom about the lives of the rich and the poor. These particular sayings speak of the riches of having a good name, the, rel the relation between justice and generosity to the poor, and provide a warning against robbing the poor and crushing the afflicted. Proverbs 22, 1 and 2, 8 and 9, and 22 and 23. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will rub clemency, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause and dispels of their life those who dispel them, the Lord, of, the word of the Lord. This Sunday's gospel gives us two healing stories. Jesus heals the, the daughter of the Syrophoesian woman and cures a man who is deaf and cannot speak. In each, Jesus is reluctant to perform publicly, but his compassion leads him to act. Mark seven twenty four through thirty seven. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know where he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoesian origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the child be fed first for it is not fair to take him the child's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. He said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demons have left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought him a deaf man who was impudent in his speech, and they begged him to lay his, ha his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and spat and touched his tongue. 
Then looking up to the heavens, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute to speak. The word of the Lord. Let us sing Jesus Loves Me as the children come forward. We got a couple more still coming up here. Ouch! Is it a cast or a splint? A splint. And what fun thing were you doing when you broke your fingers? You don't want to tell? I was going to make that joke. I was going to say you hit your brother. Is that really what happened? All right, that's a whole different children's sermon. I hope you heal well, okay? All right. Good morning. So, if we were going to play follow the leader, do you know the rules? Yeah. What are the rules? Someone's the leader, and they do actions, and you have to follow them. Do you stay in one place? No, usually you go somewhere, right? Who's going to be the leader? All right. Line up. All right. Well, um, let's see. Where should we send you? Let's send you to that window and that window and back here. So we'll let everybody follow. Okay, you're the leader. Are we just walking? No, can't run. Too many cords. Just going to walk? You're not going to do anything silly? Well, what's the fun in that? I don't know. It's church. You're not supposed to be silly, right? Oh, there we go. Oh, you're out. What did she do? Uh-oh. Uh-uh. Okay, so what do you have to do? There we go. That's right. I'll, I'll watch you. You're, you're a problem, apparently. There we go. All right. So that's the way follow the leader works, right? And sometimes you'll do stuff like hop on one foot, right? You wanted to run. We did, I didn't let you run. There's too many steps and cords and concerned parents and grandparents. But it's kind of fun, right? We like to follow somebody. We like to do, we, like, we really like to be the leader, don't we? Yeah, like to make other people do silly things. Yeah. But it's a fun game to play. We learn how to watch each other, how to, how to help each other sometimes. Now, did you know the church plays follow the leader? We do. We don't call it that. We call it discipleship. We say Jesus has shown us how we can follow him, and we try to do that. And so that's one of the ways that we talk about being the church is in following Jesus, right? Because Jesus said to the, to the people he wanted, he said, come follow me. Now, I don't think Jesus very often hopped on one foot or, you know, made, did this and made other people do that. But he did give us some things that we should do, and the most important things are to love God and love our neighbor. All right? So next time somebody asks, are you going to church? You can say, yes, we're going to play follow the leader and see what they think. Would you pray with me? Dear God, help us to follow Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. All right, if you um, would like a tag for your backpack, to help you remember to follow Jesus you know, for your backpack or school bag. You can take one this morning. If you have one, that's okay. Uh, some of you already have one. If you'd like a, pa a pack, a uh, pack, a tag to put in your backpack, 
and there's treats in the basket over there. Make sure you don't leave without a treat. All right. There you go. As the kids return to their seats, I invite you to join in our uh, hymn of preparation. In Christ there is no east or west. Our scripture reading uh, this morning, we are going to complete the chapter of Acts we've been reading that talks about the conversion of Saul from being a persecutor of the church to being an apostle of Jesus Christ. From Acts uh, chapter 9, beginning with verse 26. Listen for the word of God. When, when he had come, when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Call us to follow your good news. Uh, for this sermon series, our prayer of illumination has been our breakthrough prayer. Let us join together. Dear God, unleash in us your bold, limitless spirit. Help us to break free from where we are and lead us to where you want us to go. Call us to risk. Call us to change. Call us to follow your good news. Amen. I have a favorite story of the breakthrough prayer that I have told, and I've told to, uh, uh, I, I think it has been recorded, uh, Sue Nilsson Kibbe, who helped us put together a breakthrough prayer, leads those workshops. I have sent this story to her. She is, uh, has said she's compiling a book of stories, so we'll see. But this is my favorite story about the breakthrough prayer. When uh, Kathy and uh, Annika and Lily Nielsen worshipped with us, uh, when Mark was overseas, they worshipped with us for about a year, a year and a half. And 
they were, it was, they were explaining, Kathy was explaining it to the girls that dad was coming home and they were going to move back to Wichita Falls and, and they would go back to the church they had been a part of and, and this was going to be what they were going to do for their faith. And one of the girls said to their mom, but mom, do they know our breakthrough prayer? And Kathy said, no, I don't think so. And the girl replied, well, then we'll have to teach it to them. Call us to follow your good news. We've been talking about this breakthrough prayer partly because it, it is one of the favorite things I have been a part of here at Epworth. Because this prayer reminds us what's at stake for us as a church that we are to continue to invite the Spirit to break in upon us and not let it keep us in one place, to continue moving forward, to continuing to risk, continuing to follow Christ's good news. As good Americans, we have, sometimes have a problem with that verb, follow. I mean, what's true of the kids this morning is true of us as adults as well. We like the game follow the leader as long as we are the leader, the one in charge, setting the rules. We like to lead. We sometimes struggle to follow. The commentators on this scripture it's kind of clear, one of, one of the commentaries I read actually pointed this out. You can tell the theological bent of the, those who have written commentaries on this scripture because for some, for some who study the scripture, the fact that Paul had to go back to the council in Jerusalem and have them appro approve his ministry, for some that is a great insult. After all, he has seen Jesus Christ, he has been changed, that should be enough. But for others, they say, no, church following Jesus is something that has always been done in community. Jesus didn't call the disciples one by one and then send them out individually. He called them together and taught them together and then sent them out in groups. Uh, sometime, at some points in the, the scripture, it tells us he sent them out in pairs. Other times he sent them out in small groups. And finally, at his ascension, he sent them all out together, that the world might be changed. You see, that's what happens here in this scripture, is that Saul goes back to Jerusalem, and then he, he struggles because the church there has known him just as someone who has persecuted followers of Jesus. And they're not sure what to make of him until he has a witness until Barnabas comes and says, no, no, no. Let me tell you the story he's been telling. Let me tell you how he preaches. Let me tell you how he is following Jesus. And then the council together gathers together and says, now we understand. Let's send him out. And so because his preaching has already caused trouble in Jerusalem, that some are looking to to give him the same faith that they gave to Stephen. They send him out, and their intent is for him to go to Tarsus. That's not where he ends up. And yet, with the blessing of the church, he goes back out into the world to preach the good news. You see, we sometimes, as individuals, we want to say, I know what I know, and that's enough. And yet we as the church say we are in this together. We do this together and we do life together. In many ways, being a part of a church is being willing to do faith together, to do life together, to follow God's good news as a people of God. It's not always easy. Sometimes there's bumps and troubles along the way. I have been, uh, I have been, I think the word, I, I, joking I think is the right word, or bemoaning with a, with a spirit of joy over some of the struggles that we've been having at Epworth. And when I talk to, 
to other pastors, I say, I have this problem that we've created. We had, we had a, a structure at Epworth that allowed us to have a whole bunch of different boards, and they were all kind of, they were caring for their part of the church, but they really weren't working together in any meaningful way and, or looking at the long-term vision or, or a long-term plan of anything. And so we worked together and we came up with a team of good leaders. And uh, we've called it a servant leadership team. And they, take, they took over the, all of those areas and are leading it well. And then sometimes I have to deal with the fact that you have good leaders and you put them in leadership positions. Sometimes, Pastor, you have to sh sit down and shut up and listen to what your leaders are saying. Because this is the life of a church. This is the life of a church together. To say we believe we are all called by God, we all have different gifts, and together we discern what is best for the life of the church. We're called to follow the good news, even at times when it doesn't maybe move at the speed we want it to or the direction we want it to, we say we do this together. I've been commiserating in this last couple weeks now with some good friends and colleagues. It is the time of year for those who are entering into ministry. It is a very stressful time of year because commissioning and ordination paperwork is due. If you're going to serve a United Methodist pulpit, the, the goal is to serve full time, and that requires commissioning. And as a denomination, we have said, this is something we discern together. And so several good friends of mine have been dealing with uh, 15, 18 questions that they have to answer in 20 pages and turn in to the Board of Ordained Ministry, and then they'll be they will be quizzed on it. In, in a sense, it is the same thing that Paul has to do in our scripture today. They have to say, this is who I am, this is how I preach, this is who I am called to be. Because that's who we are together. That's one of the ways that we choose to follow God's good news. This is the gift we have that we share together, and in a sense, it's a gift we share with the world. Because this congregation here is stronger because we are a part of a group of Christians around the world who believe this is how we follow Jesus Christ. John Wesley, who had no problem making lists, came up with lists of ways in which we can follow God's good news. He called them works of mercy and works of piety. And works of piety are those that we are familiar with, maybe, and we think of as a church. It's to worship together and study the scriptures, to, to pray and to fast, and to do those things that we think of outwardly as what the church does. But Wesley also had included just as strongly works of mercy and these are things that we hear about in the proverbs how we care for the poor and we feed the hungry we care for those in prison those in need those who have struggles just as the god in proverbs says how you care for the poor shows how you love god so john wesley said how you care for those in need shows how willing you are to follow God's good news. And so we, as the people of God, take up that mantle. We take up that challenge that we will follow Christ's good news, that we will continue to spread the word, to spread the love of God, and to care for those in need. And that's who we are as the people of God. We believe that God will unleash God's Spirit in us, that that will call us to risk and call us to change, but most importantly, will call us to follow God's good news in this space and in the world, that others might hear, that lives may be transformed, that God's good news might touch every person on earth. This is our challenge. This is our call. This is our promise. Camille, would you go back up a step so we can close this series with our breakthrough prayer? 
would you join me? Dear God, unleash in us your bold, limitless spirit. Help us to break free from where we are and lead us to where you want us to go. Call us to risk. Call us to change. Call us to follow your good news. Amen. So may it ever be. We take some time each Sunday to respond to the Word of God. We have a couple of ways to physically respond this week. If, go back up, Camille. A couple of ways to physically respond. For the next couple weeks, we are uh, in charge of delivering backpacks from here at Epworth to our elementary schools. If you have some time on Thursday, let me know. I would love to share that duty with someone else to, to deliver backpacks from here at Epworth to Jefferson and to Washington uh, Elementary. We also continue to work in the new parsonage. Uh, they are doing some incredible work. Uh, there's still some drywalls and some other work to do. Shortly, they're going to be moving toward flooring, I assume. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so if, if that is something you can do, they, they are meeting most days at, at 2 o'clock and working in the new parsonage, and I know they crave additional help. And as always, our ministries here at Epworth continue. Uh, on your way in, there's, a, there's an offering plate at the, at the main aisle, and there are also offering plates on your way out so that you can continue to support Epworth. You can give online, or you can give through an ongoing gift by contacting the church office. Let us spend some time considering how we can respond to the Word of God. I invite you to stand as we join in our doxology, our hymn of praise to God. Holy God, we give you thanks for all with which you have blessed us. We thank you for the, the opportunity to give in response to your holy word. We ask that you bless the gifts that are gathered in this place and gathered in all times, that they may be used for the building of your kingdom, for the transformation of the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our closing song this morning is different than what's in your bulletin. Uh, we're going to sing together the summons. I gave Cindy the wrong number. Does she have the right number now? She's... Let's sing it all. We're okay. I, I've got time. We can sing all five. Let's join together in the summons this morning.
Now go from this place with the blessing of God to be God's people in all that you do, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.